Um, Dr. Sinal, can you share your screen, please? Uh, can you give me the authority to share my uh, screen right now? And uh, that one is not active yet. So I need to uh, release that uh, authority. And in front of the computer right now. Now camera is on and the microphone is on. However, the siren function is not. We can see your video. Yes, but like a, the siren script function is uh, still disabled from my end. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. could you release that one? I can uh, do it uh, real quick. Can, can every, everyone help us with that, please? Okay, right now it's okay. Thank you. Doctor, can yeah, you uh, I, I can share see your screen, right screen Okay, please? thank you. Perfect, we can see your screen. Okay, okay can you we, see it? We are on time. Okay, thank you. We are, we are ready to start. Welcome to this session of the conference. We have the first paper to be presented entitled Analysis and Synthesis of Vehicle Routing Problems Using Heuristics and Exact Algorithms for Transportation Combinatorial Optimization. Please go ahead with your presentation. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to my presentation. The title is Analysis and the Synthesis of Vehicle Routing Problems Using Heuristic and Exact Algorithms for Transportation Combinatorial Optimization. Outline. A brief introduction will be given at first, followed by equational modeling of a VRP and the complexity. Discrete dynamic programming, uniting uh, genetic algorithms, particle swarm optimization, and colony company optimization. Afterwards, numerical simulations will be made. Finally, and uh, conclusions will be given, followed by the reference. About me. And I'm Dr. Zheng Yi. I'm a professor in electrical engineering at the Southern University, United States. My research interests cover control and optimization with diverse applications of a classical, modern, and intelligent control series on electrical, mechanical, automotive, and biomedical system, as well as signal processing and image processing. I'm an interdisciplinary researcher with expertise on integrations of teaching and research. A quick introduction. The vehicle routing is a practical discrete optimization problem. The optimal solutions are not guaranteed for numerous complex cases. In this case, both the heuristic and exact scheme are used for analyze and the uh, synthesis of the uh, VRPs in transportation optimization. And the performance comparison of a typical schemes of VRPs are made covering exact dynamic programming and several heuristic uh, like schemes. In the analysis of uh, synthesis of these schemes are conducted at different scales so that merit and drawbacks of each will be clearly manifest. So this research actually provides a feasible way on how to solve the uh, various type of vehicle routing problems most efficiently in a timely fashion. Equational modeling. 
and the VRPs are major part of numerous logist system based on the hard combinatorial optimization. The popular heuristic and exact schemes could be applied. Now, without loss of generality, three basic types are selected. Single default, single trait, single default, multiple trait, and multiple default, multiple trait. The optimal path is the one with the shortest like a distance always. The complex cases we constrain, such as the time windows, capacity limits, customer demands, pickup and delivery planning, labor and the default costs instead are not covered in our context. Also, for the large scale VRPs with various complicated decision size and constraints, the computational complexity is used to quantify how efficient any scheme is with respect to both the time and the space utilization. In other words, the time complexity measures the amount of time taken as a function of input sequence. Well, the space complexity measures the amount of memory involved. The question model. The objective function of a single a depot, a single trip problem is defined as a Z1. And with the binary decision variable X and the actual distance between two cities L. And the constraint are used to ensure that each cities will be rated only once, regardless of the order of sequence. And the one vehicle is also assigned to weight all the cities, while the optimal rules always holds as the shortest total distance. The SDST sometimes may not reach fitable solutions with potential constraints, such as the uh, like, uh, time windows and the capacity limit. As alternative, either the SDMT or MDMT is to minimize the total distance multiple trips instead of a single trip. So let's take a look of the objective function of uh, like a single depot multi multiple trip uh, problem, which is uh, defined as a Z2. So this time, additional, like I say, index K has been introduced with those the K trip. And uh, we have another side of a constraint. Those constraints are, like I say, like, are defined in this way. Each city, and except for the central depot, is to be rated only once. Each vehicle departs and returns to the central depot and through arbitrary and repeated rules of any order. And also, the, act, uh, the actual direction does not matter. And uh, uh, one other like, uh, approach is uh, uh, like a multiple depot, multiple trip. Each objective function is defined as uh, like a Z3. And uh, now we have additional like set constraints. Each city can read and on, uh, be only by one vehicle once. Each vehicle is only dispatched for a single round trip. Each vehicle only serves one individual depot. Now for all the cases above, the general distance is assigned if any vehicle travels within the same city. So let's take a look of the discrete dynamic programming. The principle of optimality states, whatever the initial state is and the decision are, pending decision must constitute the optimal policy. So in this case, the global optimization is achieved only if the optimal solution are reached across all sub-problems. Our discrete DP simplifies the complex com uh, like, uh, optimization by breaking it down into smaller sub-problems in a recursive manner, and then locating the optimality of a sub-problems. For the deterministic finite state VRPs, and uh, like I say, DP has been mod modeled as a J right here, and which satisfies the principle of optimality. An exact optimal solution does exist in theory. However, and the with the n state is overall time complexity can reach big O n square two to the power n, and the overall space complexity can reach big O n times two to the power n. It simply gives rise to exact memory demand and also runtime overflow and uh, with the large n. As the like say, like uh, the dimension increases gradually, dp will suffer from the curse of dimensionality. And uh, now we will have the heuristic scheme and they are applicable against the various constraints and decision side. And they can give a rise to feasible solutions, which are non-optimal. Uh, non As a trade-off, computation time can be significantly reduced. So let's take a look at our genetic algorithm. The GA mimics the natural evolution and using heuristic search. And in order to produce the upstream with a high quality fitness, and the selection, crossover, and the mutation operators are all applied. 
Now the parents are children, and the uh, will selection produce the upstream. And then we have the spread, uh, like a spread vector, and factor is defined as a ratio of the mismatch of the upstream to that the uh, parents value. And uh, another like uh, index, a crossover index, is to equate the area and uh, the probability curves and the random number. So the binary crossover swaps the chosen pair of parents has specified a crossover, like I said, like a crossover rate. Additionally, and uh, we all the generate our offstrings are subject to mutation. Mutation. The mutation operator occurs at a low rate to deliver the next generation and also keep the information against the crossover and the local stagnation. And it will continue until the near optimality is reached. Regarding the computational complexity, given the number of generations n, population size p, and the size of the individual m, then the time complexity is at order of a big O PMN. The space complexity is at order of a big O PM. Particle swarm optimization. PSO has been inspired by school of phases of log of birth and in food foraging behavior to locate the sorted parts. A set of particles traverse and the ways in the search space to locate the near optimal solution by constant information interchanging with the neighbors. So in the two formulas, both the position, like I said, like, uh, vector and the velocity vector are defined for each cycle and position and uh, velocity are updated with cognitive social and the social parameters. And the formula is to pull the article from the local minimum. The other one is to, to push it to the global optimum. Our iterations continue until stagnation occurs when the objective function reaches the optimum. Still about the computation, uh, computational uh, complexity. In the, the computational complexity of PSO is a relative low for the la uh, large dimensional cases. Given the number of iteration in population size P and also parameters dimension D, the time com complexity now is at order of a big O P D N. The space complexity is at the order of a big O P D. So the last one is about the uh, and colony optimization. The ACO is also, uh, like I say, inspired by the foraging behavior of a group of ants species for sorted parts. So it involves uh, several steps. Initialization, edge selection, local like a pheromone updates, and the global pheromone updates. Our artificial lens simulates a natural ant to lay down the pheromones and also direct the other ant to sources when exploring experiment. The ant in the past leaves the trail and the pheromone, which is inversely proportional to the path visibility. Okay. In the uh, edge selection, the trail visibility is reciprocal of the distance between the two nodes I and Z. Then the binary decision will be made based on the threshold, either to adopt the path or not. In the like a pheromone, like a pheromone update, and the pheromone reinforcement really is made. For like, say, like uh, for decomposition and accumulation. Well, meanwhile, the pheromone uh, evaporation and is also like, say, like uh, is also right over there against the excessive like, say, like uh, accumulation. Based on the like, say, like uh, ACO, and the computation uh, computational complexity can also easily uh, compute it. Still, given the number of iteration in population size p and the number of cities at the time complexity is at the order of a big O p m square in the space complexity is the order of a big O p m square. So let's take a look for numerical simulations. In the simplest case, single default, single uh, trip will be connected at first. And this type of the ST, uh, ST problem is also identical to the classical TSP problem. Without the loss of a generality, and the DPGA ACO PSO are applied across the 16, 48, and the 96 cities, respectively. Let's focus on the simplest case with the like 16 cities. DP helps to locate the exact sorted parts of 73.98 and uh, in 128 seconds. And uh, the GA and ACO could also reach the sorted parts, but much faster in a uh, point 31 and point 30 seconds. It takes the least amount of time of a point 29 seconds for PSO to get a near optimal solution of a 74.10. Okay, 
The simulation result are plotted for the case one, case two, case three, and in our uh, next slide. And we have a 16 like uh, cities case. We have a uh, 14, uh, 48 like uh, like uh, cities case. Also, we have uh, like say 96 cities. Now, regarding the uh, 40 uh, uh, like a uh, uh, 48 cities case and the 96 uh, like a city case, and the DP and will run out of memory. Simply it shows the uh, DP can only reach the exact optimal solution in the narrow scope due to the dimensionality limitation. Well, in contrast, the PSO is the fastest scheme to reach the near optimal solution of VRP, but the always lack of accuracy on the other hand. The GA and the PSO and the uh, ACO are slightly slower than PCO to reach near optim uh, optimality, but they are much more accurate. So the GA and the ACO should have a priority on VRPs in reality. Now we also need to find out which one is better, GA or ACO. Rather than SDST, SDMT and MDMT will be more convincing to determine if a GA or ACO can outperform another one. Okay, single depot, multiple tree. Comparison of a GA and ACO are conducted on two scales of uh, like 48 cities on the left and the 96 cities on, left, uh, on the right. And uh, we have a three uh, trip, and also we have a uh, five trip cases. Now, GA result also on top, and the ACO also on the bottom. Both GA and the ACO work well, but in general, GA produce more accurate result than ACO. Now, for the small side of cities, possibly computation time for ACO is less than uh, GA. But in general, for the large side of the cities, GA is much faster than ACO to reach near optimal solutions. We do have some special cases. When five like uh, trips are scheduled across 98, uh, 96 cities instead, neither the GA nor uh, ACO is capable of uh, generating the shortest path without uh, crossing or enclosing. Let's take a look of the multiple depot and the multiple trip. The comparison on the GA and ACO are made again based on two scales of uh, 48 cities and 96 cities covering, like I said, like a three trip and a five trip cases. Both GA and the ACO work, uh, like work well, okay, but the GA produced a more accurate result than ACO for MDMT once again. For the small side of city, it's possible. GA is faster than GA. And uh, like I said, for large side of city, however, GA is faster than ACO to reach the near optimality. We still have some like special cases this time. When three trip or five trip are scheduled across 96 cities, GA and ACO have a difficulty in generating the uh, uh, shortage part without enclosing or let's say, like, uh, cro uh, crossing. So finally, conclusions. A set of exact and characteristic schemes are applied to analyze and synthesize three typical VRPs. For small scale VRPs, DP scheme is ensured to produce the exact optimal solution at the expense of actual computation time. For medium and large scale VRPs, however, heuristic schemes are more practical. So the PSO is the fastest scheme, but it gives rise to least accurate solution among three uh, heuristic schemes. GA scheme mostly lead to the best near optimal solution among three schemes, especially for large scale VRPs. Finally, ACO could give rise to more accurate results in shorter time window than GA at small scales. And for large and, uh, like I say, medium scale VRPs, GA scheme turns out the best approach. The reference of this work and has been listed in the current uh, slides. So that's the end of uh, my presentation. Thank you. Now, any questions? Thank you to the speaker for the presentation. Is there any question in the audience? Questions? Well, it's very interesting. Yes, we have a question comparison. here in the room, please. Uh, which in method of selection did you use for the genetic? Okay, can you repeat your question? I, I can, I bet I can hear it. I mean, uh, did you hear me? Okay. Which method of selection did you use for the genetic algorithm? Okay. So there are three kind of of operators. Of selection, like a random one, deterministic, or? 
basically, uh, at the very beginning, it is a random selection, yes. So it covers like a three separate like a steps and the selection and like a mutation uh, crossover and the mutation. And uh, let me uh, go back to the uh, to that slides. Okay, here it is. So the original uh, population and uh, are selected uh, say, like, uh, are selected based on the uh, just like a uh, random selection. And as I like said, like, uh, we will select uh, say, this milk and uh, so that we will uh, choose both the parents and then the upstream, uh, upstream will be uh, let's say, like, uh, generate using like say like our uh, just a formula right over here. Then like we make a comparison of the mismatch of our parents and the mismatch of the like say like uh, upstream. So that one uh, is related to our spread factor. So this one and uh, after that, after selection, we have the crossovers like like, uh, like uh, operators, which is to uh, just like uh, make our second step of the gen genetic uh, algorithms. Finally, the mutation is also made to avoid a second a stagnation. Okay. Thank we have you. another question here, please. Question. What is the mutation factor that you use once you do the random selection? How do you decide to, to choose the gen to do the mutation? There should be a threshold being defined, and the above average and is selected, and the below average will be deleted. So basically, here, like I said, like uh, the actual like uh, approach right here. And simply, like I said, like, uh, we also select the roulette wheel selection. Okay, thank you to the speaker. We are on time for the next presentation. Okay, in case any questions, and uh, my email is uh, uh, listed right over here, and uh, we can have some further discussion. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jorge Torres is in the room. Or we can see the previous presentation yet. Okay, okay, it is ready. Well, uh, the next presentation is entitled "An Extended Generalized Super Twisting Algorithm for Estimating Key." Biochemical variables in bioprocesses. Please go ahead, Jesus Guerrero. Thank you. My name is Jorge Torres. I'm here in the Department of Quality Control. My colleague is Jesus Guerrero from this Technological in Navasolo, Guanajuato. Victor Reza is our PhD student. So, this is a partial result of his PhD thesis. We will talk about bioprocess estimation of bioprocesses. By a very very popular, very popular. What is the point? Yeah. Yeah, yes. It's not function in the in the in the screen. It's not. Ah, the screen. It's just to change your. Change the. It's great. We want to use a very popular scheme in control. The name is superposition algorithm. Uh, we will we use a generalized version, and we will extend this in order to apply this notion to, to uh, yes, it's working? Yes, we can do that. With this. Ah, okay, <laughs> motivation. So what is a bioprocess? Uh, a bioprocess is a very complex uh, process where the a bioreactor is a main, main, a main uh, uh, important part of the process. A bioreactor is a, a closed tank containing living cells and reactants in order to produce something. And one example of this is the alcoholic distillation. Okay? Uh, or, or, uh, with, with more treatment, etc. So we, we will concentrate on in this in this part. This from the dynamical point of view, this is a very interesting system because the, the dynamics is not linear and it's complex. The internal dynamics uh, Contrary to mechanism or motors or robots, it's very difficult to know to determine the inter some internal dynamics. 
the, for sure there are subject to external disturbances, noise, noisy measurements is very common in, in any in generic problem. And also, the license are not available or are very expensive. So this is the motivation. So our goal is to, to deal with monitor, monitor a total of, of value processes. And for this, uh, this will help us to, to improve the behavior of the, of the properties of, of the value process. And for this, we would like to estimate some uh, some variables in the in the biograph. What are the, the key variables we are trying to 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 determine by by the by the superposition algorithm? Uh, it's some name the reaction rates. Contrary to the ch chemical reactors in bio bio reactors, these quantities are very badly known. Uh, there are formulas that are completely imprecise. That change from one culture to one other. And also, in the, in the tank, we have some input with the nutrients, let's say, and, and, the, and the concentration can cannot be determined in a precise, precise manner. This is the letter here. This is what I'm okay. The application of this is to estimate, to estimate non measurable states, to design control laws, and for full detection, for instance. Uh, a, a, brief, a brief summary of this, the observable, the observable work has been used for estimating the reaction rates. Among these, I mentioned here several of them. Active learning observers for the people working in control is very popular. This is the basis of the, for the observers. High-end observers, asymptotic interval observers, etc. And it's like remote observers. We are going, going to concentrate in the lag in the lag one. Okay. All these cases work well, but reasonably well in order to estimate the reaction rates. But but when we have some external disturbances, the properties are lost somehow. Lost. So we would like to design uh, to extend these studies in order to estimate these quantities in presence of, of external disturbances. Okay, this is done. The goal to design and analyze and extend the generalized supertwisting algorithm. The generalized supertwisting algorithm already exists. We would like to extend in order to deal with the problem we, we propose. Yeah, and to apply this to the reaction estimation and different uh, concentration of the field rates. Okay. This is the mathematical expression. It's very, very well known. This first one, three, four, four, four uh, equations. These are the dynamical systems. You can consider this the state x1, x2, pro one and pro two are ex external perturbations. And the rest are definitions, diagonal matrix of the other value, etc. This is the this is called the extended generalized supertwisting algorithm. It converges in infinite time. Normally, in the classical theory for, for, for control, we have your asymptot asymptotical convergence. It's that, that means that converges to zero at infinite times. So we, we have infinite times much more convenient for us. Okay? So this has a solution. Suppose that this, uh, this extra terms satisfies some certain set of condition, and this element inequality is, is verified. Then we we'll have finite time conversions. The, the, the details of the proof are, are well known and are reported in the, in the paper. So we we'll like to adapt this theory in order to, uh, for the estimation of value quantities in bioprocess uh, toys. What uh, let's say I would like to say that a problem in engineering, in particular in, in automatic control, you we, we may have very nice theory. In particular, for nonlinear system, but the problem is to find a nice application, a pertinent application of this theory. So we claim that this is a good example for this. This is a value process. There is a general model. It's reported in the literature of the topic, which is the reference. So this is the state. But basically, the state theta, theta are concentrations, microorganisms. Uh, Different components, nutrients for the, the growing of the of the space, etc. 
this is a question is very simple. It's just a balance of my of my, my of it's just about material, balance of material. Sorry. And the quantities we like to, to determine is reaction rates and set I the, the are not well interested. Okay. Well, these are te technical assumptions. So we can uh, this is also technical. We can partition partition the model in this way. Uh, K is an unknown matrix, etc. Uh, so with this, with this decomposition, with this take the take the in the model in this in this in this form, we are able to determine with the extended algorithm the quantities we, we are looking for in a in a very rough in a rough manner. This is uh, okay. This is a uh, how how we can do this. This is the the composite system. It's, a, it's also a, a very interesting step here. We can define some extra variables in order to simplify the, the problem. And in a, as a matter of fact, we can we can estimate simultaneously the reaction rates and the the ex external perturbation in this way. So if it takes I even oh if this is this as a matter of fact. This algorithm converge in, in infinite time to the nominal values. Okay, we can determine it. So, a numeric, a numerical, a numerical simulation in order to destroy the. I mean, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Maybe this is familiar from, from, from some of, of the students here, an alcoholic fermentation process. This process, for instance, the fermentation process for for uh, producing beer. Okay. During the pandemic, my son tried to produce beer. Also, we don't have to work quality. Also, this is the same process. Internally, there is a micro microorganism. The name is Saccharomyces Saccharomyces cerevisiae, etc. So uh, we have these three equations in this case. Um, X is the, the living cells, S, S are the nutrients, and P is the alcoholic produced by this process. Okay. For simulation, we suppose this that this quantities are has, has this form. Some are very popular in the literature literature. And in order to prove the robustness of the of the scheme, we propose this. Kind of signals for the input concentration of the nutrients. Okay, we have compared this extended, generalized extended with a previous one extended. This, this or this is this this algorithm was already was already published in some journal journal of control projects. Okay, this, we apply the solution making some LMI with by MATLAB. Determine these, these parameters. And now, these are the parameters for simulation and for the observer. Now, now we have here what we are looking for the concentration of the influence nutrients. Okay. And in uh, black, we have the nominal one. In blue, we have the over. over Proposition in this in this work, and in, in red the previous one. So all of them work properly, no. But the difference between these two algorithms is that the the blue one is faster than the the red one. It has more or less the same robustness properties. So we would like also to estimate the first reaction rate. Yes, this. Also in, in this in this zone, we can appreciate the difference in the, the response time. Both of them are robust because this this is at the the perturbation we 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 put in the input, okay. And this is the second the second reaction rate, okay. In order to confirm the these two algorithms, we we propose the uh, mean squared zero. Well, let's say they're uh, of the same order, okay? No problems. 
Pues a conclusión, we propose here an external generalized superdistrict algorithm for the uh, simultaneous estimation of, of by uh, some uh, uh, quantities in a uh, bioreactor. What quantities? This is the time scale. And the simulation presented in the anthropologic communication approach shows good performance in estimating the side values. This, this, this theory can be applied to any other bioprocesses that satisfies the generalized model. No? Thanks. So. Okay, thank you for the presentation, Jorge Torres. Is there any question? There. Or virtual. Yeah, I have one question. How, how this okay. is better, like a camera from a camera filter, maybe? Camera yeah. filter fi fi is a very good, uh, good filter. It can be used as like, like observer. Uh, the, the advantage of camera filter is it's uh, robust against noisy me measurements. So we have to wo work harder because this algorithm algorithm suffer of some. Uh, when uh, when are faced to to noise to noise the measurements. Okay. And, and, and the advantage is that conversions in infinite time. And uh, let's say that the good algorithm is for, for Kalman filter is uh, nice enough for almost linear or almost linear systems. And for non-linear systems, the, the performance is degraded. And I come to the question. Um, what happened if maybe I don't have like a well, it's necessary to be continuous, the, the, the segment. But what happened if I want to implement with some samples of data instead of some so this continuous segment? Yeah, yeah. Well, when we work for some discrete measurements, that is the case for many, many systems in the ground world. Normally, we, we use the digital processor. So uh, this is also lacks, lacks of robustness. Um, but but uh, the other technique, high gain techniques, has good properties against this. No, every, every, there is not a solution for everything. Okay, yeah. We have time for more questions. Because he was in, in another Congress in Acapulco. But this, this climate perturbation kept him in, in that place. Hopefully, he's going back now by 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 bus. Is there another question? No more questions. I have one. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. In in your comparison, yes, yes. in your comparison with, with yes. the the other method, is totally different, right? Uh, can you repeat your question? Yes. The other method in your comparison is totally different to the super twisting algorithm. Uh, the gifts mainly fast conversions. To the to the to zero. This is just the, the only difference. Okay. In the application, it depends on the application because from a design point of view, it's easier to 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 calculate the gains for the STA algorithm. Okay, then your method is easier to implement in terms of tuning parameters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Is there another question or we can go to the next paper? 
Thank you very much. Thank you to the speaker. And the next speaker is Brazil Campos Sanchez. He's here. Yeah, he's here. Okay, we can see your screen. Yes, perfect. Well, the next presentation is entitled IoT Architecture and Security Mechanism for an er Energy Management System in a Smart Grid, Microgrid. Uh, please go ahead with your presentation. Oh, thank you. Okay, hello, buddy. My name is Rafael Campos. I'm to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk about this work. Thank you. Hi. My name is IoT Architecture and Security Mechanisms for an Energy Management System in a Smart Microgrid. Um, so let's begin. This is the content of the introduction. Of the, of the presentation, uh, we, we, we will see a brief introduction, uh, some characteristics of the SMG, the proposed architecture, the proof of concept, and the conclusions. So, in the next years, according to the International Energy Agency, there will be an energy uh, demand increase. And this is because the growth in population and the digitalization of social and industrial processes. So this poses a, ma a major technical challenge as the, for our uh, for the current of the actual state of this infrastructure. So in the figure, in the figure we we can see the grid evolution of the electricity infrastructure. Uh, first, we have uh, local generation systems. Because of the screen. So oh, thank you. So. And these systems are uh, focused in served to local area like uh, industrial facilities or hospital. Um, they have low accessibility, high cost pollution. And the next stage is the central generation system like the CTE, uh, which has high generation capacity, but the technological backwardness, it's a old technology, and the difficulty in incorporating alternative energy sources uh, brings the need to, to search new infrastructure. This is how to be the microgrids, smart grids, and smart microgrids. These are focused to incorporate distributed generation and smart consumption, but the intensive use of electronics and communication systems brings cybersecurity risk, and the research, the research is in development. The next stage is hoped to be a smart infrastructure called uh, Energy Internet of Internet of Energy, but this is a concept that relies on the readiness and the technological readiness of this stage, this field stage. So we're focusing on, on this. Well, let's talk about the SMGs. First, we'll, we will define a microgrid, and this would be defined as a subsystem consisting of a set of distributed loads, electric generators, energy flow control and protection systems, as well as an energy management system or EMS. So this defines the electrical part. And then the introduction of the IoT paradigm into MGs includes the intensive use of electronics, devices, sensor actuators, and communication systems, giving way to the smart microgrid concept. So we, we have the microgrid, and we put on top an IoT system to uh, being able to the microgrid to being smart. It's, it's a simple diagram that has uh, generation elements, consumption elements, as well as an energy storage system, uh, all uh, work together by the central controller, an EMS, and communicate by the communication protocol. So uh, there are uh, a lot of classifications of these systems. It depends on one question. For example, the most common is the type of current that the SMG supports. We have the CAC and hybrid. We are focusing this work on DC loads. But the SMG is a critical infrastructure. 
what is a critical infrastructure? These are system and assets, whether physical or virtual, so vital to the US, it could be generalized for, for the world. That the capacity of destruction of such systems and assets could have a debilitating impact on security, national economic security, national public health, safety, or combination of those markets. So all the electric infrastructure could be considered as critical infrastructure. And uh, as we can see in this table, there were many attacks in the last years. And one of the most popular attack was a complex attack is the, in a gas pipeline in USA. The, the kidnappers want some bitcoins, really the system, and they get them, but uh, it's, it's complicated. So this, this type of infrastructure, it's, it's very important to, to get some considerations of cybersecurity during its operation. Uh, another important characteristic of the SMGs are the architecture. So we have three types of architecture, centralized, decentralized, and distributed. Um, each one has pros and cons uh, from the point of view of control and cybersecurity. So the main advantage of the centralized architecture is that we can reach a global optimization of the system, but uh, it has less flexibility in the face of change on the system. Uh, from the cybersecurity uh, point of view, the main advantage is that all resources are protected from central point. We can implement our rules, cyber security, but a local flow could lead to a general failure. In the other hand, the distributed architectures uh, could gain, could reach the local and global optimization, uh, but the control methods could be complex. Uh, from the cyber security point of view, a local flow does not affect the global operation, it could be isolated. And both the protection of remote elements, it's more complicated. So, this is our architecture proposed for this system. Uh, as you can see in these figures, the elements are in each node. This is an architecture based on uh, control elements. We have two types of, of uh, agents, the primary and the secondary. And uh, the primary agent is tend to be the uh, communication infrastructure. It's the only difference the, between the, the secondary ones. So each node could be connected to a loads, energy generators of uh, batteries, and this uh, each node could be uh, a function independently of the rest, and it could be as uh, work together. So this is the IoT stage of the of the control agent, where you can see the communication module. The security module, storage module, and IoT module, which the main objective of this module is uh, coordinate the, the communication of the information between other nodes. But this, um, this, this node uh, gives information to the EMS stage. In the EMS stage, we can see a uh, sense of flow control modules, current matching modules, sense of flow, and an EMS that is communicated with the IoT stage. So um, this part is uh, where it's connected to the electric uh, components, like power generating elements or batteries. And for the proof, the, this architecture, we made a simple proof of concept, uh, a very simple implementation to, to see if, if an, a robust implementation was uh, was available to, to see better results. So we implement uh, these two uh, control agents. The primary control includes a commercial solar controller to make the tasks of uh, current adequacy. We have solar panel as an element of generator uh, electricity, and the Raspberry for the process processing, and Arduino for the real controls, and solid state relay as a control flow uh, device. Also, how about in the secondary control agent, we have a solid state relay, same, same elements, but it's simpler in the part of process. So this is a, a, a very open implementation of this primary control agent. Uh, it has the, the, the elements that we mentioned in the, the past slide. And um, it could be connected to a secondary control agent <coughs> 
that has this element. It, and the the conversion the adequation the current adequation in this in this case is are, are carried out by the book converter book converter a battery charger that gives an um, oh, autonomy with autonomy and uh, charging the battery uh, uh, automatically and uh, to prove the availability of the maintaining control systems based on machine learning, uh, we implement a uh, control five PC control because the most of the attacks that we seen in the table were achieved by violating the information layers of the system. So in the control uh, layer of the system, we don't have any protection. But uh, including a PC control based on rules, we can. Um, Take, taking account, account some cybersecurity considerations at the low level, at the lowest level. So uh, these are the membership functions for the for the first control for inputs and outputs. This is a very simple and and the and the output of, of this. Thing. We are working on a, a first control complex uh, that taking account these these rules. So the conclusion. The proposed architecture for this ESMG has the structure, characteristics, and elements necessary to establish an intelligent, scalable, and flexible in electrical infrastructure. It, that is what we needed from the first uh, slides. Two, the EMS established that energy adequacy and flow control are carried out independently. This is important because uh, some works take the whole problem and try to solve from the control. But this is too difficult. So this architecture allows us to, to carry it out independently. Three allows implementation of control system based on machine learning that integrates cybersecurity consideration, which can protect the system against attacks that violate the security in the other stage of the system. So this is an advantage uh, that I see uh, as a uh, really, really little. No? There are no, no lot of work that include cybersecurity in the low, in the lowest part of the control system. So this is a, a great advantage that we work on. So, thanks for your attention. And pause for your presentation. Is there any question? I have one. Uh, Anyone a question? Here we have a question, please. Yes, please. Do you see in the future world that you're going to be doing a specific architecture for the embedded system that you're going to be using, like changing to another microcontroller, or you're good with those microcontrollers that you're using? Oh, it, that, that's a good question. Um, uh, from, from this much, I, I didn't mention that, but uh, we, we are trying a lot of hardware uh, platforms like Raspberry Pi uh, and Arduino, like it's it's easy to make it work together. But um, this the system, the world system, the these devices I and mean, these devices are made in Python and in MicroPython, all the system. So with the same language for all, all the implementation, uh, we hope that we could have one control system for all implementation. So this could be very modular, and it could be very scalable. Um, our main intention with this are uh, that could be uh, low cost and easy implementation. Thank you. Thank you for the question. More questions in the virtual audience or in the room? No. Uh, No? Okay, I have one small question. Is there or there exists some metrics, some measurements to prove that your system is better than others? Well, uh, at, at, uh, at an architecture level, it's difficult to say uh, in this moment. But for example, at the uh, controller level, we are comparing with uh, one. Uh, we we are including 
some cybersecurity concerns. Uh, the main of this is the false injection that is that the controller could go recognize when an attacker it's it's injected false data to the to the controller. This is the main uh, attack to these systems. The, the, while the, the attack used in Ukraine in 2016, the, 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 the attackers injected a zero demand input, so the system uh, were shut down. So uh, in this case, we are focusing and comparing those with, uh, with a, a work that uh, focusing and detecting this type of attacks, the false data injection. So in, in that case, we have a metric when, when they, they, they have a data set of, of false data and they, and they see if the system is capable of recognizing. So we are going to do it also almost the same thing. OK, interesting. We have time for another question. If not. The last press speaker is Efrain Alcorta. It's in the room. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I will be presenting the work in, uh, on behalf of uh, Efrain Alcorta. Okay, Esteban Ruiz, are you? No, yeah. David Diaz. Uh, Miguel Ángel Latas, so, so, maybe that. <laughs> David Díaz. Show your screen, show your screen, please. Yes, one moment, please. Uh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. No, no. 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 Is, that, uh, is there in any way that I can uh, open this? Uh, the link you sent in, uh, directly on my Teams uh, application because I, I'm using right now the 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 browser and it it is not working for me. You try to. I'm trying very hard, really, really hard, but um, but I cannot uh, do it. If you close your web browser and enter one more time. 
the thing is that I'm trying to use my uh, application and it doesn't takes the, okay, this one is, I will do as you said, but the, I will be out just for a little while and then I come back. Okay. Can you tell me, please? Yes. Hello. 
I don't know. Can I send you my, the presentation so that you can show it in, and then we can just follow that way? I think in the chat. Yes, you can. can but it. if you can uh, yes, share your screen, screen, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I try to share my screen, but it doesn't work. So I don't know why. It, it might be some permissions in my browser. Browser, 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 but I don't know how to fix it. I don't know why, uh, but if you prefer to send your presentation, I can share. Uh, can you send the presentation for the email of CCE, please? Uh, okay, I'm trying. How can I send it? Uh, do you have WhatsApp or something like that that I can share with you? The email for CCE uh, of this conference, please, or for the chat, the, this team, please. please. Can you please allow Miguel Platas to share the the desktop presentation and I can do the the talking? Is it possible? Sorry, uh, we don't understand. Can you repeat, please? Can I speak in Spanish? It's, I think it's easier. No, right? okay. no, 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 no. La, eh, no, no. Miguel Platas is the other eh, person that is on the paper, and he has access to his, eh, he may have access to his computer, and then eh, it will be easier for him to share the presentation, because I am having really, really a hard time trying to share anything here.
Okay, uh, Miguel Angel, uh, can you share your screen, please? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 we can. Okay, okay. I will share the screen in a moment. A moment. Please, please, please wait. Can you see, Can my, you see screen? my screen? Sí. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Can you okay. extend your screen, please? Let me turn off my mic. What do you say? I think. Uh, we can see, we can your, see your presentation. presentation. Please, please. Presentation. Thank you very much. So those are the contents. Uh, I will try to be very brief uh, so we can catch up with the time. Uh, thank you very much for uh, assisting to this um, presentation. Uh, I Sorry, will we cannot the, see the presentation. presentation. I can see the presentation now. It we says can. contents. Oh, this is strange. I think it is because we are inside the the um, institutional network. That's my theory. Right? This is we can see it inside the network. But we, I, you do, you cannot see it outside the network on the Autonomous University of Nuevo León. I don't know really what is going on uh, there might be some um, proxy work, some, some something else to do, because I can see the presentation right now. No worries, uh, uh, just uh, wait uh, 10 uh, minutes. We want to resolve this, please. 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 Hector. Hector. Sí. I, I can see the presentation, mate. Other, other people can, people see, the can see the presentation? No, 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 I can see it. So I wait for you to give me the go ahead because I, I can see the presentation. I don't know. Yeah, we have yeah, a we have a same a problem because yeah, here, here any, any computers, computers we can we see can the presentation, see presentation, but, presentation but in others not. Other so, so one moment. One moment. Yeah, thank you.
please um uh, angel platas or jose javier read, read well the authors can can send me the presentation here in the chat or the email for cce please So can I start the presentation now? Mm, no, because no, here, here we can't see the presentation. presentation. Okay. Okay, just give me sit one uh, five five minutes to, to to check this problem, please. Okay. David, are you seeing the chat? Now I can see it. I'm, I'm trying to send it right now. Okay. Okay. Please. So I already sent it. Uh, I hope it can it works.
We can see the presentation. You can see the presentation. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, you have your 15 minutes to present data and five minutes to ask your question. question. Thank you very much. I will, as, as I said before, I will try to be very brief. I just uh, showing some uh, results uh, of the application of um, um, a very easy to, to, to set up um, um, experimentation uh, basis. Okay, it's an, uh, the, pro, the, the work is, is called identification and control design for an experimental setup to take home. So um, I will I will be I'll present this on behalf of uh, Professor uh, Platas and Professor Alcorta. Uh, I don't know, can you move this, the next uh, slide? And, and this is the contents. Uh, so I, I divided this in, in three parts. The first is why we do it. The second one is the setup of the of this uh, laboratory. And the third is results and conclusions. Next. Uh, next. So the motivation is, I think, uh, everyone who has um, uh, given any lectures in, on, on control systems has uh, has seen the problem that is to share knowledge with uh, with your students. So uh, the main problem is that you don't have a large quantity of um, physical laboratories to 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 give to your students. So um, so what we try to do is to prepare a, a setup that can be taken home. That's, that's the first thing. Uh, we are working in a public university, so um, the students are some uh, many times are of low income, um, uh, of low uh, have a low income, so they they cannot have access to expensive uh, material. And as we will see, this uh, setup is very very cheap. Uh, the second one is the students needs to do or perform the experiment so that they can really grasp the knowledge that we are trying to share. That uh, whenever it's uh, theoretical, it is very easy because we can write it down in the um, in the blackboard. But when we want to see the experiment, is quite hard because uh, we don't have enough material to to put every student to work all the time they need uh, so they can understand what is going on uh, with this uh, this kind of theory. So then uh, the next one, the, uh, uh, the last one uh, point is, um, is very important because it, it says it's, do it, uh, it's a do it yourself um, concept. So the student has to create the plant in order to, want to, to do the experiments. And in this way, they really, really uh, uh, acknowledge the the know the, the knowledge that they are trying to to grasp. So the next one, please. This is uh, there. If you make any research in the network, you you will find a lot a lot of results. These are three um, prototypes that uh, are very were very interesting for us. And we um, we try to use them as a uh, a basis for for the work we are presenting. Next one, please. So at the end, we try to do a self implementation of this idea that is really easy to find in in the in the network. But, um, what we try to do is to and uh, to take all the results and all the theories and uh, courses that we um, do here in the university and and try to apply to to use this uh, term, uh, plant. So next one, please. So this is the plant. This is a very easy um, system. Um, this transistor uh, 
can be activated by uh, using the basis, the control signal is applied in this basis. And then we uh, produce a, a flow of current from the collector to the emitter. And in the, on the other side, we have a, a resistor, a, ter a thermistor that is a negative um, uh, temperature coefficient thermistor and the uh, voltage divisor. So in this way, we can sense the um, heating of the um, uh, of the transistor as as long as the uh, there is current flowing through the the system. Next one, please. Next slide. Thank you. So. Uh, no, no, no. The, the previous one is, is just, uh, I think it's, uh, it was twice. So the previous one, in the previous one is the, uh, the model for the temperature. How does the sensor works? As you can see, it's very nonlinear, but at the end we can uh, uh, find a way to, to read the temperature and then uh, feed it to the controller. So uh, the next one. Those are the um, diagrams that shows how does the temperature uh, against the voltage uh, uh, for this uh, for our thermistor, and uh, of all of these um, arrangements, we will use the A arrangement that is a, a voltage divisor that makes um, the curve that is uh, shown in um, a light blue uh, on the right, and as we can see. Uh, as long as the temperature rises, the voltage uh, drops, and uh, and that's the way we are uh, sense the temperature in, in our system. Thank you. Next one. And we are using a very cheap uh, component. Uh, I, I, I think I, uh, yesterday I saw the the prices for this component in in, in Amazon, and it's about uh, three components for uh, around five five dollars for components so it's very very cheap next one please and this is the setup on the right you can see the connection for the uh, external uh, source of of, of uh, electricity as long as the current is very high for the uh, arduino and uh, and we can see also the the temperature dissipator, which is uh, joined to the uh, transistor. In the, inside the dissipator, we will find the thermistor. In that way, we are trying to do or, or achieve those two things. The first one is to have a very close um, approach from the emission of heat to the sensor. And the other one is to try to um, diminish the um, the behavior, the nonlinear behavior due to the uh, air currents or anything that can interrupt or, or sensing. Next one, please. This is a, a, just a, a, a close up for the arrangement I already told you. This is the thermistor and this is the um, dissipator of uh, temperature for the transistor. Next one, please. So the results, what we try to do is to um, to do a, an identification for the system. This is one of the um, main courses in this university for control. Uh, the first part then is a system identification. We created a random uh, input uh, whose form is uh, shown in the first uh, um, part of the figure. And in the lower part is the output of the system due to the to this uh, input. Next one, please. So the identified system uh, is, is shown. Those are the uh, coefficients uh, uh, that we are uh, trying to find. It's a delayed time uh, system. And we are basing our results on, on a paper that is was already uh, in, shown in, uh, in this uh, magazine or, or journal uh, of engineering. So 
This is the identified system. It's very easy. It's a first order system. The next one, please. And uh, as we already have one of uh, one applies uh, one way to apply it is uh, in, in the identification of systems, system identification. Sorry. Uh, now we want to try to use uh, this result for uh, control design. So we uh, use um, an already shown result on on the uh, bibliography, and, and and we can find this idea of a, a proportional and integral optimal control for a delayed system. That is exactly what we uh, got from our identification. So we apply this uh, schema to the, our system. Uh, we can see that the, the way or the form the, of the system is similar or very similar, if, if we cannot say exactly the same as the one we got from our identification process. So now we create our, our system um, in, a, in, a, in a state space. And the next one, please. And with this result, we can obtain this um, state space um, uh, system. Now we will try to, to, to do the optimal control, and we will use this um, uh, index uh, formula. Next one, please. So to not make very long the, uh, the, pre the presentation, those are the um, values for the um, control system. We obtain this uh, as as usual from for a uh, uh, optimal control uh, course. We we use um, linear quadratic uh, regulators and, uh, and not very high-end uh, uh, high uh, controls. We are using just the necessary for the undergraduate uh, students. So this, those are the results. Next one, please. And those are some of the parameters uh, we, that we can find for um, for our Q and um, R uh, matrices for in order to resolve to resolve the Riccati equation. And in, in this way, we can uh, obtain the the um, feedback law uh, that we are trying to find uh, for the for for the sake of the course. So the next one, please. Those, all of this is uh, a result uh, that, that we uh, uh, create. Uh, at the end, we use Python or uh, R, uh, the, the um, mathematical, well, the, the programmation language R, in order to obtain uh, all of these results and then uh, show uh, the results to the uh, audience, or the students. And as we show this and, and give some of the uh, programs, they try to do the same at home. So next one, please. So with all of this, we resolve the, the system. As you can see, we, for this, for the sake of this presentation, we made the uh, analysis using, using the Sage Math uh, software, which is a meta uh, uh, package for of mathematical tools that uh, are, is, is very powerful. Next one, please. So the, those are the conclusions. Um, one of the first things that you can see when you use this kind of setups is that the students are really, really engaged. So this uh, easy and, and maybe you, you may see it like a, a and very easy and not useful uh, uh, setup. It results in a, a very engaging activity for the students. So they really start to uh, try to work out the theory, uh, apply it in something that they can take home. So they can. Uh, sometimes uh, we 
have talked with uh, some students that they say that they stood all the night trying to solve some uh, some of, uh, some of the problems, and uh, at the end the um, that that is a result that we we don't show this and more a a social uh, way or, or or point of view of, the, of, of, of all of this work is that the qualifications or the notes of the students go up a little bit, uh, at least a little bit in, in the group. So uh, for this system is uh, is uh, useful for the lay systems. It's very uh, cheap uh, for cheap um, setup. It's 300 pesos, 300 pesos for that is around $15 or, or even less. Uh, that is affordable for a student in here in Mexico. And um, and as uh, as we work out a, a little bit more of uh, results, we will be trying to share it with with the the community. At the end, we put all of these results on the GitHub platform so that every student can download the schematics, the code, and the, the results that we are trying to teach them. Next one, I think that's the end. Yes, that's the end. I don't know. Do you have any questions? I think uh, we already surpassed the time for uh, for the talk. But if you have any question and can be answered here, I will try to do it. Otherwise, you can write to us uh, uh, or uh, email, and and all of our data is on the um, on the paper that is already. On, I think in the on, on, online. Thank you very much. Thank you to the speaker for the presentation. Is there any question to finish the session? Uh, questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry, sorry for all of this um, hectic moment. Uh, and um, we wait for any um, com uh, talk around this uh, topic. Thank you very much. Well, thanks to everybody. Thanks for the help with the technical issues. Have a good afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.